I'm Sam Boone from Signet Breeding Services and I'm here to talk about the results from the Ram Compare Progeny Test and the services that AHTV deliver as part of the sheep genetic evaluation. The Progeny Test is funded by AHTV and HCC with a number of other industry collaborators and supporters that assist us a great deal. Within the progeny test, we take rams and we take semen and we use those across a number of commercial farms, collecting information at lambing time when lambs are eight weeks of age and ultrasound scanning just as lambs approach slaughter. We also get the abattoir data and that enables us to create breeding values for a whole range of traits and incorporate those into our breeding indexes ultimately to rank animals according to those that will produce the most uh, profitable uh, progeny when used as terminal sires. But RAM Compare is much more than just a RAM ranking. It actually provides the data that underpins our multi-breed genetic evaluations. And along the way, we've learned a tremendous amount about flock health, genomics, ewe efficiency, genetic research in general, uh, and certainly some just dabbling with a bit of work in terms of meat quality. So one of the biggest projects of its kind, but it's really delivering in a number of areas. One of the really exciting things that we've been able to do this year is to firmly embed the abattoir trait data into our national genetic evaluation. So we've been fitting correlations between the things that ram breeders measure on farm, farm traits, and also the data that we collect through the CT unit. So all of that information is used uh, and we fit the relationships that we know about the traits. And so we can produce breeding values for the things that we see on farm, those that we measure with the CT unit. And now we've got much more accurate data for the abattoir traits that are of, of real importance to us. The second thing that we've been able to do this year is to launch genomic breeding values. So collecting DNA uh, from those animals that are really well measured, um, both through ultrasound, CT and abattoir data, using that data within our genetic evaluations. And then we can even go through that next step where we collect uh, genomic data, perhaps through the, the breed society, we can start making predictions about some of those animals if they're relatively closely related to those that are already involved in performance recording. So that's been a major step forward for our genetic evaluations. And genomics is very much part of our future, and that's only been possible through close collaborations with the Hampshire, Charolais and Suffolk Sheep Societies. They've shared pedigree and genomic data with us, we're sharing genomic data and, and breeding values um, back with those societies. So it's a close working relationship that's really helping to take us all forward. The challenge with producing brand new results every month is actually what to report, because within a few weeks, even the data that I show you here will be updated as more information comes in. So while it is quite exciting to show uh, the subset subset of the 80 or so rams we've tested this year. Um, we can also pull out data showing how certain individuals have compared to the to the sort of the flock average. We can show how rams of the same breed have performed against each other on the same farm. Um, we can go further and look at how rams have performed over the full 10 years um, the, the sort of full ranking. But I guess what I'm trying to encourage people to think about is really, if you're interested in a specific breed, and we've got Charolais here as the example, but if there's a specific breed that's of interest, then actually where does your Charolais ram in this example sit relative to all the other Charolais in the breed? So we do have some uh, ranking and results from this year that I'll talk about, but have a real good look at the overall picture for your breed of interest, which uh, is supplemented through genomic data and information that comes through from the Breed Society. So results for this season, a couple of, of things to talk about, I guess. Uh, the first one is it's been a really nice reminder of the value of CT. So I've got a couple of rams here. They happen to be Charolais in this example that have performed really well. So good animals that we picked based on their breeding values uh, on farm performance, growth rate and muscle depth, but it's really their CT data that brought them to our attention. Both have really high yields of lean meat within the breed, really good jigot shape uh, relative to the rest within the breed, and you can see that really delivering on farm. 
um, the RAM at the top um, has uh, you know an extra 0.3 of a kilo of meat in the carcass, virtually the same age, and uh, you know 10% more lambs uh, in spec. Uh, and the one uh, below, you know, 0.5 a kilo increase in carcass weight, uh, and again a, another 10% of lambs getting in spec. So that really reminds us of the value of the data we get through the CT scanner, and actually through genomics, the way that we can make that available across that particular breed. Carcass confirmation is important, but so is data slaughter, both from an economic point of view and as an environmental breeding objective in terms of producing low carbon footprint lamb. Fitting the correlations between scan weight um, and days to slaughter, we can show in, in all of the breeds, we've got Hampshire's here as our example, that a big increase in growth rates over the last 20, 25 years has made a massive impact on reducing days to slaughter. Across the Hampshire Down breed here, they've easily reduced days to slaughter by over a week, and some flocks are moving even faster. So that's a really significant change. And we can see that borne out really nicely in the RAM compare results this year. If we plot scan weight versus days to slaughter EBVs, we can see the RAM's doing exactly what it says on the tin. Uh, you know, even with our example here right at the bottom, you know, 17 and a half kilo carcasses forage based system at 118 days of age. So absolutely motoring through 30, 40 years of selection for improved growth rate through our performance recording scheme in Signet recorded flocks. And finally, just a word about our reference ram. So every year it's a different breed that we use. This year it happens to be a Charolais and a, and a really good one, um, which was made available to us um, through Seaman through its uh, owners, uh, Neil Orton, Jamie Wilde and, and Andrew Walton. Um, so used across four flocks. And you can see here the consistency of performance. Although some flocks you'll see that difference in days to slaughter. Some flocks you'll see that in terms of carcass weight. But here we can see um, with Adrian Coombe and Alwyn Nutting um, reducing days to slaughter by the, the best part of a month. And with Adrian and Shaz Compare and, and the Circum Families Farms, we can see carcass weights being lifted by half to, to nearly a kilo um, through the performance of this really high performing sire. So it's great and it reminds us that breeding values, providing lambs have good um, feed, forage uh, and health in front of them, that genetics will be expressed regardless of whether it's a fast finishing system or one that's tending to, to finish lambs more slowly um, over the autumn period. And we've written up some lovely case studies. Um, uh, Duncan and Angus have been recording data with us for over a decade. Uh, so there's quite a bit to talk about with their, their flock up in Northumberland. Uh, and a very nice example of the HCC supported farm across in Paris, where we've got an open day later this year, if you want to come and join us. So. We'll just briefly talk about the, the farm results based on the 2024 lamb crop. Um, in terms of days to slaughter, we've got uh, Suffolk from Percy Gilman sitting right at the top of the list for days to slaughter. We've actually got several Suffolks near the top of the list, along with some Charolais. I can see Meatlink, um, Hampshire Downs, and uh, even got a couple of Oxfords on the list. Uh, producing some of the fastest finishing progeny for the lamb crop that was born last year. If you look at carcass weight, we've got a, a Texel bred by Peter Baber sitting at the top um, in, in terms of his overall carcass weight. Um, but we've got Suffolk's, we've got quite a few Charolais in there. Dutch Spotted been used with us for the first time last year and performed really well. And we've got several meat links. Um, in terms of genetic potential for carcass weight. That same ram sits at the top in terms of carcass confirmation, uh, a number of the Charolais, Meatlink, uh, and indeed the Beltex that we used on test, all moving up the rankings when we look at animals with leading carcass confirmation based on last year's data set. And finally, uh, if we look at carcass fat class, uh, the leanest sheep that we had on test last year would have all been uh, Texel. Um, those with a little bit more finish uh, as they approach slaughter weight, tending to come from the, the native breeds that we use. So the Hamps, the South Downs, the Oxfords and the Shropshires, all having just that little bit more finish um, as they approach slaughter weight. 
So if we look at the overall financial performance, well, probably unsurprisingly, the, the Texel that was leading for carcass weight and confirmation sitting at the top of the list. But most of the breeds are well represented this year. Uh, Suffolk, Charolais, Meat Lynx, Hamps, Dutch Spotted, all up there within that, that top ranking for, for financial performance. All getting there in different ways, whether it's speed of growth rate, whether it's carcass weight and confirmation. The only thing uh, maybe worth mentioning here is that we're actually looking at our breeding indexes that we use to take more account of abattoir traits. And there's a really exciting piece of work being done for AHDB, AHDB funded work that is, uh, with Agbu in Australia that will be updating our breeding indexes. So you'll hear more about that in the autumn of, of 2025. If you want to get involved yourselves, then please do nominate rams or nominate semen for use across this commercial progeny test. Nominations are, are open at the moment for, for a short period. Um, we're also really interested of sources of abattoir data. So pedigree flocks that record with Signet can already supply their own abattoir data if they have animals killed and use that in the evaluation. Um, but you may be interested in working with us to establish a new ram compare farm either testing a, a mix of terminal sires or maybe you want to run a breed specific test to get more rams of your breed out uh, on onto test there's also plenty of uh, bedtime reading uh, either through the ahdb knowledge library or most of these are up and available through the signet website if you can't find what you're looking for then just drop someone in signet an email and they'll find you that information and so a reminder of the details of the Signet team, uh, Bridget Lloyd is project manager and leads the project. So it's probably your for, uh, first port of call. But Laura and I would be more than happy to assist. Thank you.